Hello and welcome to another video. So this is a video on critical numbers and it's more like a warning video or a watch out video or a take note video. Okay, so whenever you're asked to find the maxima or the minima, you know you're going to have to find the critical numbers which you're going to plug back in or you're going to do the sign chart on to decide where you have your maximum or your minimum. Now, usually after you take the derivative you equate to zero you get your critical numbers you cannot just take the numbers you got and use them two conditions must be met the first one is whatever critical number you get must be in the domain of the functions you're given okay so if you're given this function well we know the domain of this is from negative infinity to positive infinity so whatever number you get on that is real will always work but in this case, it will not always work because whatever number that makes this denominator zero cannot be in the domain and therefore cannot be a critical number. So you have to watch out for that because after you take the derivative, things change. Okay, things change and move around and then you find numbers that are not on the domain, but they're critical numbers. You have to discard them. That's why I call this video discarded critical numbers. Okay, and the second condition is, so let's say the number is in the domain as in this case, because whatever number you get will be in the domain as long as it's real. That number also has to fit within this interval. It has to be from 2 to 4. It cannot be before 2. It cannot be greater than 4. It cannot be less than 2. If it is, you cannot use it, because if you use it, you will truly get an answer, but your answer will be wrong. Okay, so that's what I want to show you with these two examples. Let's get into it. So for this first one, we're going to just take the derivative, equate it to zero because that's how we get our critical numbers. So we have f prime of x will be equal to 3x squared minus 12x plus 9 equals zero okay um, we need to factor this I, I think this actually can be you can divide through by three so let's just get rid of the threes we're gonna have um, x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals zero and as you can see um, if I factor this I'm gonna end up with x minus 3 x minus 1 equals zero which tells me that x equals 1 and 3. So those are the two values, those are the two critical the th critical numbers from this problem. Okay. Now, if I want to find the maxima or minima, either by doing the direct plug-in, which is what is re um, recommended in this case, because it's a closed interval and um, it doesn't extend forever, you're given a certain interval, just plug in um, the beginning and the ending and plug in these two values and see which one gives you the maximum and which one gives you the minimum. So one of those four will give you the minimum, one will give you the maximum. The problem is you can't use the number one because one is not in the interval. So you can see that three is valid because it's between two and four, but one is not. So when you write your answer, you're going to say critical number x equals 3. That's the only answer that is valid. Okay? So the critical number is 3, not 1. So you have to discard 1. You say 1, x equals 1 is discarded. Okay? Since 1 is not in the interval 2 to 4. So that's how you present your answer. This means not a member of, okay, not an element in the interval. Okay, so that's that about that. So remember, one is in the domain, but it's not in the interval. That's why we're going to discard one. It's in the domain. You can plug in one in this function and no problem, but you can plug in one in this interval. I mean, it's not in the interval, so that's the case. Let's go to the second one. So for the second one, just to make my point clear, let's find what the domain of this function is. Remember, for all rational functions, 
the domain of the rational function is from negative infinity to positive infinity except for the values of x that will make the function undefined which will be whatever you will get when you equate the denominator to zero so let's quickly specify what the domain will be i know that this function is the same thing as x plus 4 over x minus 1 squared this is a perfect square okay it's x minus 1 times x minus 1 that's what gives you this. So I know x cannot be 1 because when I solve this, x cannot be 1. So let's start and say the domain of this function is from negative infinity to just before 1 union from 1 to just before infinity. We don't know what that is, but that's it. Okay, so this is the domain, which means we cannot get x equals 1. So now let's find the critical numbers. So f of x, oh, again, for a rational function, remember, the critical numbers are the numbers you get when the top is equal to 0, after you take the derivative, or the, when the bottom is equal to 0. So you do them separately. So we have f prime of x. Applying the quotient rule will be x squared minus 2x plus 1 times the derivative of the top, which is just 1, times 1, minus, we're going to keep the top, x plus 4, times the derivative of the bottom. If we take the derivative here, we're going to get 2x minus 2, all over the square of the bottom, which is going to be um, x minus 1 squared squared, which would be x. So x minus 1 squared, when you square it, becomes x minus 1 to the fourth. Let's simplify this. So this is going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus, if you multiply this by this, you get 2x squared. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> and if you multiply, if you multiply this, by this you get minus 2x and it's cancelled out by this minus so it becomes 2x and if you multiply this by this you get plus 8x with a minus minus 8x and then this times this is minus 8 plus mi cancelled out by this it gives you plus 8 rather plus 8 okay all over we've got x minus 1 to the fourth okay uh, one last cleanup so this takes this out and you have, um, um, what do you have? You have x squared, x squared minus 8x, and then you have plus 9. Okay, over x minus 1 to the fourth. If we factor the top, what do we get? We get um, x minus 8, x minus 1. So we have, this is equal to x minus 8 x minus 1 over, now I know I got 3x minus 1, so I'm mean 4 rather, so I have x minus 1 to the 4th. So this will take out one of these and then you have just x minus 8, so this is x minus 8 over x minus 1 to the 3rd. So from here, if we get our critical numbers, it's going to be this equal to 0 and this equal to 0, but we know this if we solve this, we're going to get x equals 1, which means that we can't have it because we already said 1 must be excluded. So the only critical number that we can get is x equals 8. Now let's go back and see if x equals 8 is in the domain. Yes, it's in the domain. Now, if x equals 8 is not in this domain, it's not between negative 10 and 10, you discard it, it means there's no critical number. Okay, so there will be no critical number at all. Okay, but we're lucky that this one is there. So we have critical numbers. So we have um, critical numbers I'm just for, as such that x minus 8 equals 0, which implies x is equal to 8. Now the second one, um, x minus 1 cubed equals 0 implies x equals 1, but we say invalid, invalid because it is not, not in the domain. Okay, so this is the only critical number you're going to turn in as your answer because that's the only number that is in the domain and is also in the interval that is specified. I hope you got this. Don't mix it up because if you use the wrong numbers, 
you might get an answer and that's going to get you in trouble because you're going to lose the points. Use only numbers that are valid in the domain and in the interval. I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.